another edition of Loop Tips by Flow Components. For today's featured topic, we go to Jackie. Jackie? Today's topic is grease fittings and things to know about them. Gabriel? Okay, thanks Jackie. With more on grease fittings, we go to Mike. Mike? Thanks Gabriel. Here we have a selection of grease fittings and couplers. Let's take a closer look at things you should know about them. On the right, we have a selection of common grease fittings. And as you can see on the left, we have a selection of the grease couplers. Looking at this selection, we see that they come in many different sizes, threads, adaptations, lengths, and actually even styles, as this style right here. Look at the common characteristics of a grease fitting. When we take a grease fitting here, all grease fittings have a ridge, a lip, which is referred to as the bull neck. That bull neck is actually the sealing surface. When the coupler is made it onto the grease fitting, that is the sealing surface so that the lubricant is pushed through the ball check and into the lubrication point of the bearing. Care must be taken with regards to this bull neck because, as said before, this is the sealing surface. As you can see with some of these grease fittings, there is actually no threads. It's more of a barb, which is what is commonly known as a hammer-on or a drive-type grease fitting. Here, the installation of the grease fitting, the actual casting is drilled so that the grease fitting is actually hammered in or driven into the actual hole. You can also tell with this fitting because there are no flat edges to put on a wrench. Standard grease fitting, as you look at the outlet, which is actually threaded in the lubrication point, is not built to handle any type of back pressure or lubricant pressure coming back through the bearing. You basically have a spring and a ball inserted into the actual fitting. You can get high pressure grease fittings that have a secondary check, which is built to withstand and handle any type of back pressure that may come back from the lubrication point. The fitting on your right is a standard grease fitting. The fitting on your left is what is known as a button head fitting. For those applications and bearing points that require a specific lubricant, you can use the button head fitting into those points which requires a specific coupler on the end of your grease gun, thereby allowing for the lubrication of the point but eliminating the possibility of a incompatible grease being put into this bearing. Take electrical motors. They require a special type of grease. When you install the button head fitting into the bearing of the electrical motors, you then take a grease gun filled with that specific lubricant and the mating button head adapter. By doing this, you're eliminating the possibility of a standard industrial grease being dispensed or applied into that bearing. When looking at drive type grease fittings, the only way to repair them is, is to drill, easy out them, and then to install a new one, typically you're tapping or cutting a thread into the housing of the bearing. If you're running remote lines to a manifold of grease nipples or to the automatic systems, what can be used is what is called the Zerk Lock. This adapter snaps over top of the drive type fitting so it no longer has to be removed from the bearing point. What this does now is it turns that grease fitting into a 1 8 NPT female thread so now you can hook up your grease line going to either a manifold of grease fittings or onto your automatic loop system. When looking at grease couplers, they come in many different pressure ratings, configurations, 
and styles. One of the main characteristics to know about a coupler is the actual jaws. The jaws are the mating surface for the coupler onto your grease fitting. As discussed in previous episodes, the proper way to attach the coupler on to the grease fitting is come on an angle and come off on an angle. By doing this, you are saving the sealing surface of the jaws and the coupler as well as the bull neck. One thing to note is that the jaws in the, in the coupler can be reversible by unscrewing the actual coupler. You can take these jaws, turn them around, put them back in, tighten the coupler back up, you now have a new sealing surface. This is the actual button head coupler or adapter we talked about for electrical motors. When you take the button head fitting, this coupler slides right on top of the fitting. You can now dispense lubricant. One last thing to note, as discussed in previous episodes, when attaching the couplers to the grease fittings, you should always wipe both the fitting and the coupler, thereby eliminating the possibility of pumping contaminants into your bearing points. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Back to you, Gabriel. Okay, thanks Mike. Jackie? Oh no, Ryan! Oh. Oh. Thanks, Gabriel. For more information and tips, check out our website, flowcomponents.com. Back to you, Gabriel. Thanks, Jackie. We hope you've enjoyed today's show. Until next time, thanks for watching.